um, it's going to be a brief session, but I know that it will be a very powerful moment. And I thank all who are following from around the world. Thank you so much in the name of Jesus. Now, please, two quick announcements, two quick announcements before we get to the ministry of the word. Number one is, as you may have been told, um, for those who are in the church, members of New Heritage Baptist Church, please make sure your prayer requests, I'm going to be praying on your requests, so make sure your prayer requests are, um, I, I don't know, you collate it if you can, so that I just speak from here. For those who are connecting from different platforms, your homes and everywhere, um, it, is, it is important that you have your prayer requests. You can quickly write them somewhere along the line. I'm going to be speaking over them by faith and will trust God for a great miracle. Number two, it is also an impartation service. Um, so I would want you to, if you have a bottle of oil by faith, for those connecting in your homes, you can just bring your bottle of oil by faith. Remember, the power is not in the oil. The power is not in the ritual. The power is in the faith according to scripture. Okay, so please, I, I want you to understand that. But then I'll be praying on your oil so that you'll just anoint yourselves. And I believe that there is a system already in Church New Heritage Baptist to make sure that um, the oil gets round to the people in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, our time is fast spent and I just trust God to come with an exhortation and then we'll go straight to pray and then I'll minister. The last, um, the first session that I had, let me do a quick recap for the sake of those who are just connecting. I began to speak about the keys, the principles that would help us activate possibilities. The Bible says, for with God, for with God, he says, all things are possible or nothing shall be impossible. That means that when God is part of an equation, nothing is impossible. We're dealing with possibilities here. And I did share with us that the kingdom is built on systems, built on systems. And it's very, very important for us to understand the systemic character of the word of God. Uh, that there are laws that the saints operate by and these laws grant us an opportunity to be able to experience the life of God at a superior level. Please listen very attentively. Uh, we discuss the law of faith from Numbers 23, 19. The Bible declares that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And so it, it's very, very important for us to understand that the integrity, I did speak about the conviction that comes based on the integrity of God and his ability. Please do not forget this that our faith in this kingdom is predicated upon number one the integrity of God his unbendedness that when God says a thing we can trust him because he he is faithful to bring that which he speaks to pass and then number two his ability that God is El Shaddai the multi-breasted one all powerful he is able to do above and beyond that which we think or ask and so it is important and I did tell us that the Bible contains promises. The Bible contains principles. The Bible contains prophecies. So when we begin to explore scripture, we find the principles that are attached to the promises and the possibilities that we desire. That we meditate upon these things until understanding comes to us. And then number two, when we gain understanding, we now understand our participatory role. We need to know what role we have to play in actualizing or committing God or bringing a performance of the things that we have believed. Praise the name of the Lord. That is very important. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says um, that without faith it is impossible to please him. Whoever comes to God must come believing that he is, he exists, and that he is the rewarder of all them that diligently seek him. Faith is very important. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Amen. The next principle or the next um, requirement, kingdom mystery that I'll be sharing very, very briefly and then we'll pray is 
spiritual empowerment this is the second key that we need if we want to do exploits in this kingdom if we want to rise to levels and dimensions where we are able to do so much for the kingdom we need to be empowered spiritually it is very very important the bible is full of men and women who were very ordinary but when they were empowered of the spirit empowered of the anointing the bible begins to record the exploits that they did hallelujah now generally let me say this i wrote something down here and i would like to just just observe it before we continue you see we are equal in christ please understand this the bible says the same lord is rich unto all the same blood atoned for our sins the same opportunity in christ is given unto us but we are all separated by three principal factors please listen the reason why some people seem to be at certain levels of possibilities above others generally speaking is based on three factors number one um, the quality of information that you have access to it matters how you are taught it matters the framework of your belief system it matters the kind of spiritual information or the kind of information generally that you are exposed to so all men are different based on people become uh, the possibilities in their lives i mean now become um that disparity happens because of their their various degrees of access to different levels of information if i sustain a superior knowledge my life will demonstrate superior results if i sustain inferior knowledge then inevitably my life will demonstrate some results that may not even be glorifying to god so it is important for us to understand that generally speaking men are distinguished by the level and the access and the quality of the information that they have number two the kind of relationships and associations that they have in honor to and of that superior belief system because every belief system translates you to a realm where you will meet like-minded people there will always be a circle that reflects your belief system so when you access superior knowledge that knowledge is able to translate you to a realm and a dimension where you begin to be exposed to strategic relationships and associations those associations provide leverage those associations provide opportunities for you to rise to superior dimensions in life and then to to command results that are outstanding and then number three the quality and the dimension of spiritual empowerment that you have access to so number one we are distinguished by the kind and the quality of knowledge that we have number two the relationships and the advantageous connections that we have in our lives then number three the dimension of grace the dimension and the level of the anointing that is upon you acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says how god anointed jesus of nazareth it says with the holy ghost and with power he was anointed lavishly with the holy ghost and with power the bible says who went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed for god was with him so in as much as we are same in christ our possibilities are governed by these factors and now i want to just touch on one of them spiritual empowerment we live in a world where several people um, want to achieve supernatural results but in the strength of the flesh the bible clearly tells us that the flesh profited nothing that means it is impossible to rise to a level of outstanding results a level where your life brings glory to the name of the lord a level where your life begins to reveal christ in experience and bring glory to the same if you are not empowered spiritual empowerment is very important Jesus mentored a group of people for a period of three and a half years and when he died he came back to life in the book of Acts chapter 1 he was together with them and then he continued his curriculum teaching them on the matters of the kingdom he told them tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power zeal is not enough sincerity of heart is not enough 
the purity of motive is not enough as important as these factors are we need to be empowered especially in today's world hallelujah this is very very important spiritual empowerment is important in ministry it's important for business it's important for family in in the bible you would read especially in the old testament people were not allowed to serve any dimension of kingdom purposes without an encounter with the holy ghost that brought them empowerment of different sorts and at different levels then they began to command uh, various levels of exploits and generally in the kingdom please listen carefully spiritual empowerment happens um through two channels principally spiritual empowerment occurs through two channels number one is the prophetic the prophetic the prophetic is the first platform that avails the saints the opportunity to be empowered now let, let me pause here and just um I'm, I'm 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 so touched even just talking about this now because um when i talk about the prophetic already there are people who um have all kinds of negative ideas and and i i sincerely understand that uh, a lot is happening in the body of christ when it has to do with the prophetic because um i know that it's been exaggerated especially the apostolic and the prophetic ministry generally speaking and um i'm not teaching human worship i'm not teaching subjugation i'm not teaching um glorifying men above the christ that's not the idea in as much as i know that there have been these excesses and imbalances it's no news in the body of christ and i know that god is patiently helping his body uh his bride to come into that point of conformity but then i think in a bid to manage the excesses that has come from depending on men and the place of prophecy we are now throwing the baby and the bath water just because um, we as ministers may have failed to bring balance to the context of the role that men and prophets and apostles uh, play in the life of people it does not necessarily mean that the concept is wrong i think it is just the imbalance around it because i know that there are people who teach and you know make it look like you don't need any man to rise all you need is just the word of god but number one don't forget that the scripture that we read was was inspired of the Holy Ghost but it was written by men it took men inspired of the spirit to write it Jesus himself needed to become a man to redeem men as powerful as he is and he was as God he needed to become a man you will always need men in the equation of your success and there are people that God has anointed there are people who are conduits of his possibilities gifts that he has provided that within the context of balance and within the context of hearts that are determined to exalt Jesus the prophetic and the apostolic ministry is powerful so powerful that when uh, um, I mean Apostle Paul was teaching he said that the kingdom is built the system of heaven is built up upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets christ himself being the chief cornerstone even in heaven the foundations are built with the names of the apostles of the lamb so it's important for us to understand that the prophetic is very important in activating possibilities in our lives it provides a platform for creating possibilities it provides a platform for lifting and in the name of Jesus, I believe that as you are following, as you are watching, as your heart is connecting, that word is coming into your life to activate supernatural possibilities in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself, like you may have heard me say, even though he was the logos of God who became a man, he needed to be at the mercy of men. It took men at age 12 to teach and mentor him in the tenets of the law. And when he was 30 years old, the Bible says, he went to Jordan and he took a man John the Baptist to baptize him and open him up to his messianic ministry when he died it took men to bring him from the cross to the to the uh, the grave 
and then that supernatural miracle happened and it's taken men today to let creation know that Jesus is Lord so the ministry of the prophetic the ministry of men and women empowered by the Spirit to speak over the lives of the saints it is very important and it is it is it is more important especially in the days that we live in now you need an encounter with the prophetic hallelujah very very important hosea chapter 12 please and verse 13 the bible says and by a prophet hosea 12 and verse 13 and by a prophet he said the lord god brought them out of israel out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved so the lord brings people out by prophecy and he preserves them by prophecy and by a prophet it was the lord that brought them out but he did it by the instrumentality of a prophet and he preserved them so god is the doer but the the instruments that he used are his prophets and apostles this is very important you are listening to the word of the lord now is the holy ghost speaking yes but he's using a human vessel who has availed himself to be used by god new heritage baptist church is being blessed coming into conformity with the prophetic word but it took a man your pastor your man of god to communicate the counsel of god please listen to me do not ignore the ministry of men do not ignore the ministry of the prophetic in activating possibilities in your life it's amazing how we can scrounge around trying to find direction for our lives and one encounter with a true apolic and prophetic dimension can shift us to levels we never imagined let me show you a scripture the bible says in second kings chapter 7 second kings chapter 7 uh let's look at it very quickly from verse 1 to 8 second kings chapter 7 this was the story of the miracle that happened in the land of samaria there was famine as you know women were eating their children then elisha said verse 1 hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time now listen if it was just about speaking anybody would have said this but now a man is speaking under the influence of the spirit he said a fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria verse 2 then the lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of god and said behold if the lord will make the windows of heaven open you know might this thing happen etc etc let's go to verse 5 let's go to verse 5 the bible says they rose up at twilight to go to the camp of the syrians the four lepers now and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp there was no man there look at the miracle that happened because a prophetic word came what happened verse 6 says for the lord had made now watch this very interesting a prophet is speaking and then they go to the camp four lepers now get up remember when prof when the prophet was speaking here the four lepers were not there when he spoke he spoke from the gate of 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 samaria and then the spirit of god in honor to that prophetic word began to move four lepers and they took a step of faith and the lord made the host of the syrians to hear a noise of chariots a noise of horses even the noise of great horses and they ran away and left the people read verse 7 please go to verse 7 wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses their sheep their asses even at the camp as it was they fled for their lives last verse verse 8 the bible says and when the lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carry ten silver watch this it was not just supply in terms of food they had silver they had gold they had raiment they went and hid it and came again and entered into another camp they had abundance even as the prophet spoke now you would think that um 
God did not want to bless the nation of, 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 of Israel, his people, the people in the land of uh, uh, Samaria. You would think that God just sat in heaven and was just watching these people languish. No, he was waiting for that ministry of the prophetic to allow his outstretched arm and his power. Did you know that you can be in a situation for a very, very long time and it will look as though God is helpless concerning your situation? Because remember, it is God that created these ordinances. You will be surprised that at the instance of a true prophetic word, all of a sudden it looks like all heaven begins to move towards you and in the name of jesus the christ of god may heaven begin to move on behalf of someone on behalf of a family on behalf of an individual in the name of jesus christ turn things around overturn things in the name of jesus sudden miracles supernatural performances of the spirit restorations healings in the name of jesus christ Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Very powerful and instructive scripture. Ezra chapter 6 please and verse 14. Please be sure to write these scriptures down so that you can study them when you're having your time with the Lord. He says, and the elders of the Jews build it. So he's talking about building now. He's talking about doing something that was not there. He says, and they prospered not because of the dexterity of their instruments of building. He said they prospered through the prophesying they prosper through the prophesying they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo the Bible says they built it and finished it amazing that while the architecture was going on physically there was the voice of prophets speaking and saying building be complete building be finished and the Bible records that that speaking contributed to making the building finished finish it says they prospered through the prophesying let me speak to someone by the spirit tonight in the name of jesus and according to the election of grace that every mountain that has stood before you this year 2020 i stand in the name of jesus i declare to fall before you like dagon in the mighty name of jesus christ everything that has mocked the name of the lord in your life i stand by the spirit of faith and by the grace of god to declare that doors are open i speak over the two lived gates that stand to shut you from your next level i declare in the name of jesus these gates are opened these doors are opened sudden miracles for you in the name of jesus christ i believe in the prophetic i believe in the supernatural power of the holy ghost invested upon men and women and God can coordinate them to your life and they can become conduits of spiritual possibilities. Very quickly, let's look at the second platform for spiritual empowerment. It's called impartation, Psalm 23. It's called impartation. So the prophetic is one of the platforms that gives us the privilege to be empowered. And then the second, for the sake of time, is impartation, Psalm 23 verse 5 psalm 23 and verse 5 thou preparest a table before me hallelujah in the presence of mine enemies then it says thou anointest my head with oil as a result my cup runneth over notice god does not anoint the cup he anoints your head with oil and then your cup begins to show the results thou anointest my head with oil my church my ministry begins to produce results thou anointest my head with oil my spiritual life takes another dimension thou anointest my head with oil my finances take another dimension thou anointest my head with oil my business and my career steps into another dimension it is important for us to believe in in the power of impartation what is impartation very briefly impartation is the transference of spiritual possibilities 
the transference of spiritual possibilities the transference of spiritual possibilities impartation is not just the coming of oil or the laying of hands upon you know impartation is not just falling down to roll under the influence of the spirit those those things are just manifestations impartation has to do with a system that provides transference now this is how god does it everything god places upon a man his intention is that that which is upon that man is distributed across the body of christ so if god puts a healing anointing upon pastor benny Hinn, the goal is not for benny Hinn to be the only carrier he may have a unique ministry of healing but that through that vessel for instance he can become a channel and a conduit if god places a grace of favor upon an individual the goal is that people can it can become an avenue for everyone to have access to it so when he sends a word to jacob in his mind he's thinking israel god never intends listen carefully god never intends that the grace that he puts upon men for the body just remain with those men now when god calls a man there is a unique anointing upon that man's life as a result result of his office but there are anointings that God puts upon individuals not just for their benefit alone but so that they can be distributors of that possibility and I've said it again and again that every result in the kingdom is governed by the grace and the empowerment that is upon your life it is true there is a grace that controls favor please listen please listen new heritage baptist church and then the believers who are following there is a grace that controls favor there is a grace that controls speed there is a grace that controls restoration there is a grace that controls um the the manifestation of of creativity there is a grace that causes men to love you these things do not just happen and god invests this grace Grace on individuals and expects that they be distributors of this possibility to the body of Christ very very powerful impartation is true by the Spirit of God impartation is true first Samuel chapter 10 please first Samuel chapter 10 Kabo Sabranda Kaso de Balakata I'd like you to lay your hands on your head wherever you are in one minute and say Lord my heart is open to receive my heart is open to receive my heart is open to receive declared by the Spirit whatever nation whatever city declared by the Spirit my heart is open to receive in the name of Jesus it's time for me to shift to dimensions where my life becomes a greater expression of the power the glory the grace the possibilities that are in the kingdom it's time to leave these levels this inferior levels of kingdom representation to higher dimensions of possibilities in the spirit the bible says in first samuel chapter 10 and verse 1 this was saul now his encounter with samuel then samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said is it not because the lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance notice he never said please go back to verse one he never said that is it not because i have anointed you no he said the lord has anointed you but we don't see any angel appearing in his presence we don't even see god appearing we see a man samuel taking a vial of ordinary oil pouring it upon the head of a weak man who is in need of restoration and he looks at him and says i am doing this acting out something that is the intention of god is it not because the lord has anointed you that he has sent me to speak and release something upon your life is it not because there is a prophecy upon your destiny that you are rising and shaking off the dust rising to superior dimensions in the spirit listen let me tell you impartation works you can know the kind and the level of grace that is upon your life by the possibilities that you command when you find out you are trying and trying and trying and certain doors don't open you are trying and trying and trying and certain possibilities don't seem to be captured in your life there may be a number of things to check you may need to check knowledge you may need to check action and so on and so forth but then you need to come to a point where you may have to admit that i need impartation a transference of that possibility 
Hallelujah. God is blessing New Heritage Baptist Church right now. Blessing believers all around the world from this broadcast. But then you must understand that it took a man, a man of God, Pastor Julius Omomola, and God anointed him in an unusual way and caused him to create an opportunity for this to happen. Listen, men can limit the workings of God in your life. It is true. And within these few minutes that we have, I want your heart to be open. I have seen what the anointing of the Holy Spirit can do in the life of a man. That God can take you from a dunghill and lift you to dimensions in the spirit that you may never believe possible. New Heritage Baptist Church, I believe that you are entering a new season. A new season of spiritual hunger. A new season of awakening. A new season of supernatural manifestations of the hand of God. And many who are following online, I believe in the name of Jesus Christ that you are stepping into new dimensions. Please, I want you to believe this. These are not just the speakings of men. This is not just a motivational talk. The Bible says the things we have seen, the things we have heard, the things which our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that is what we teach. You are not hearing cunningly devised fables. There are people watching me who are saying, Apostle, I love the Lord, but he's called me into the healing ministry, but I'm, I'm not seeing the power of God move in my life to that effect. There are people who are saying, Apostle, I know that there is need for a dimension of the grace of God. I'm tired of suffering, tired of hardship, tired of all of these things. Listen, truly speaking, I tell you, it is not the economy or the condition of men that define your portion. It's the possibilities that the grace of God provides for you do you know why we contend for these impartations and all of these things it is not so we can be purported as great men and so on and so forth no no not at all the goal of everything we receive I have to say this before we begin to pray there is a purpose purpose is what gives value to all of our spiritual pursuit that the purpose for the anointing is not just to be a man of God MOG and then move around you know in pride and all of that not at all it is so that we can be equipped to be effective at revealing the glory and the name and the power of Jesus and then bringing glory to the results that we command to him so my prosperity my increase my results it is that are activated in my life the bible says that um um how, how, how does it say it again in, in a very very powerful way it says he that told you have not asked for anything then it says ask that you may receive that your joy may be full and remember the bible says when you see righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost coexist it means the kingdom of god has come it has found expression god wants to bring joy to our lives god wants to roll away reproach from our lives god wants to bring us into a life of honor and glory i i said in the in in my previous broadcast that we do not serve god because of things never never we don't serve god because of cars because of houses because of all of these things however that he has decided to be benevolent that while we serve him ultimately because we love him there are provisions tokens of his love scattered around our experience with him so that in experience our lives will show that we are partakers of his divine nature we are going to be praying right now thou anointed my head with oil listen i want you to be tired of where you are i want you to be tired of your current level there is no point you see when you do not see a need for the ministry of the spirit upon your life to take you to higher dimensions um this teaching may just be like a nuisance to you and it may look like oh what do i really need the anointing for but let me tell you my dear brother my dear sister parents uncles colleagues and and, and all who are following let me tell you you need the anointing of the holy ghost in your life especially if you are in ministry especially living in today's world you will never be able to rise to certain supernatural dimensions until the investment of the spirit is upon your life I look at the things that God is doing through my life today and is is, is is something that let the name of the Lord be glorified but it is proof that what is upon you will truly govern what is around you 
what is upon you the grace the empowerment that comes upon you is what governs everything around you we are going to pray Philippians chapter 4 please from verse 6 and 7 I like us to pray if you are in the church there and you can stand please stand it's time for us to pray we have but a few minutes together the Bible says be careful for nothing the word careful there means be anxious for nothing he's talking about anxiety Nigeria hear me New Heritage Baptist Church the body of believers the pandemic and um, many things that have come along with it has is brought a lot of anxiety to our lives people are anxious what will tomorrow be the economy finance people have lost jobs and all of that and i truly truly understand and i sympathize with all those who have had to go through all kinds of things especially at this time but the bible says be anxious for nothing then it tells you what to do instead it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests let your concerns be made known unto god god wants to know the things that give you concern verse 7 it says and the peace of god hallelujah which surpasses all understanding it says let it keep your heart and your minds through christ james chapter 4 please and verse 2 very powerful apostle james was teaching us why we do not have this ye fight and war yet ye ye have not and the simple reason is because you ask not he says you have not not because god cannot give you have not because you ask not tonight within the few minutes that we have we are going to ask for certain things lift your voice in one minute and begin to thank him lord i thank you for opening me up to the understanding of the systemic character of god that by engaging faith by engaging um the prophetic by engaging impartation i can come into a point where my life begins to command strange results and activate divine possibilities is someone praying all over the nations of the earth begin to pray new heritage baptist church pray men women children parents lift your voice in one accord and let's cry to that god that answers all prayer Lord, we thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus for the privilege. The privilege that you have given us to come boldly that we may obtain the grace that is required for the time of need. Now, I'd like you to pray and you are going to ask the Lord. Listen, listen, let me establish this prayer point I'd like you to declare unto God, Father, I believe in the ministry of the prophetic. And I believe that as words come by the Spirit, I do not just receive them as words of a man. I don't just receive them as words of a preacher. I open my heart sincerely not above christ and not above the word of god but in compliance to your character and the systems you have put for my lifting i receive these words and i declare that they will work for me please lift your voice and pray lord i receive i open up my heart sincerely to receive of the ministry of the prophetic i am tired of this level i believe in the creative power of prophecy its ability to shift me to realms untold its ability to shift me to dimensions never experienced job said there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there i like you to believe god release your faith in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus the last prayer point and then i begin to minister you're going to pray impartation is very powerful the transference of possibilities such as i have peter said give i unto you in the name of jesus of nazareth rise up and walk there are men who have things and god distributes those anointings in and through men i like you to pray look at the areas in your life where you know you have not seen results the areas in your life where you desire genuine results i like you to cry with a desperate heart like blind Bartimaeus. 
dominion i like you to begin to pray father the grace that controls this dimension of results i receive it the grace that controls favor i open up my heart to receive it the grace that controls supernatural supplies i receive it the grace that controls the ministry of men i receive it the grace that controls speed the grace that controls spiritual hunger you don't just hunger after god like that no there is a grace that comes upon you by the holy ghost that makes you to love god beyond money love god beyond ministry it provides a hunger in you that nothing else can quench there is a grace that stirs up revival you may be a man of god praying and say lord the grace i need for the word the spirit of revelation there is an anointing that causes this word to open it's not just because you open the bible that um it means you will just find things there no your eyes must be washed with eye salve and god will grant you that access pray lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus there is a grace that makes for exemption that when the vicissitudes of life and the tides of life begin to you know become boisterous before you there is a grace there is a grace that distinguishes you because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows very important hallelujah now very quickly we're going to do it this way um i like you by faith i'm going to give you one minute everyone very quickly lift up your prayer request in your home everywhere you are new heritage baptist church um if the prayer points are before the altar that's fine or whatever uh, um channel whatever channel it is that you have just just make sure your heart is released new heritage baptist church you can stretch your hands towards the altar by faith and every other person you can just lift your prayer point and in the name of jesus stretch it towards me as i stretch my hands back by faith listen i'm an ordinary man there is nothing unique about me in myself but because of the investment of the grace of god a portion for this season this time this dispensation we have become by the privilege of his grace t words of this mystery and there is a throne that backs what we represent it's not just empty talk stretch your hands believe by faith raise your prayer request father in the name of jesus i decree and declare first over new heritage baptist church in the name of jesus and then oh god i pray over all who are connecting by faith from the united states of america to england to nigeria to ghana to kenya to south africa and even here within the nation in the name of jesus every city every state i stretch my hands in the name of jesus and i declare supernatural miracles in the name of jesus i declare supernatural miracles let the angel of your presence in the name of Jesus begin to go to homes right now I speak by the power of the Holy Spirit miracles in homes in the name of Jesus I break the bands of wickedness Satan I decree and declare by the spirit of faith that your reign and your dominion over every family of concern is terminated in the name of Jesus I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit the mystery of the blood every legal access that Satan has had hitherto over families over businesses over ministries over churches over men and women of God I stand in the name of Jesus and I declare it is broken by the blood of the eternal covenant in the name of Jesus anyone appointed to death I declare that death passes of, away from your life in the name of Jesus the fullness of your days you will fulfill in the name of Jesus I pray for every dying ministry hear the word of the Lord I speak to you come back to life in the name of Jesus I pray for every family that is going down going down in the name of Jesus I declare that you continue to come up in Jesus name everything that does not represent the counsel of God I come against it in the name of Jesus Satan the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit I like you to begin to declare over your request father I stand in faith and I declare that everything I have written will return as a testimony someone praying lift your voice and begin to pray 
lift your voice and begin to pray genesis 21 lift your voice and begin to pray 21 verse 1 please lift your voice and begin to pray lord that which i have written will never never have to be rewritten again in the name of jesus i declare by the spirit of god supernatural miracles the Bible says in Genesis 21 and verse 1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Very interesting. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and then the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. So he said it first and he did it. I'd like you to pray. Father, you have said it. Now do it. You have said it through the mouth of your servant. Now do it. You have said it through the word. Now now do it in the name of Jesus do that which you have declared that will happen in my life in my family in my finances in my spiritual life in the name of Jesus Christ lift your voice and pray 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 I'm praying for you now from the depth of my heart I'm praying for you now I'm praying for you now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying for you now now before I pray on the anointing oil I just sense a very strong healing anointing here right now I know that the Lord wants to bring supernatural miracles and please listen to me as I pray for you the power of God is going to touch you and I want you to share your testimony you can use the social media platforms especially for New Heritage Baptist Church let them know what God is doing in your life right now please I want you to lay your hands right now everywhere in your body you're trusting God for a miracle it could be your head it could be your abdominal region if it's a part of your body you cannot easily touch just lay hand on lay your hand on your chest right now I want to pray for you thank you Jesus my God there's such a strong anointing in this place in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare right now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed in Jesus name I rebuke sickness I rebuke infirmity I rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus I rebuke blood diseases hear the word of the Lord I rebuke you in the name of Jesus I rebuke tumors I rebuke cancers in the name of Jesus I rebuke HIV I rebuke bone conditions in the name of Jesus Christ I rebuke respiratory conditions in the name of Jesus begun by the power of the Holy Spirit there's someone you are having a severe pain around your ears in the name of Jesus I speak to you right now by the Spirit of grace be healed you can hear it's not like you cannot hear but there's severe pain I declare that pain leaves now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me someone is like you have stroke it's like you have stroke I cause that stroke in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus Christ there is a lady I'm seeing it's like you have a lump around your breast area I'm declaring to you the moment I pray right now check yourself you will find out that a miracle has happened in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle for you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus there's someone you are watching me right now the anointing of the Spirit is coming upon you you are a minister of the gospel but the Lord is saying he's introducing certain graces in your life you have been fasting and you have been praying you didn't even know about this broadcast until this evening right now I'm seeing a strong anointing upon you and the Lord is saying he's opening you up to a very strange teaching ministry it's a prophetic dimension of the teaching grace and you you will minister with power genuine authentic spiritual power in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare to everyone who is sick be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now heart palpitations I curse you in the name of Jesus diabetes be healed in the name of Jesus peptic ulcer I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost be healed heart conditions of all sorts be healed in the name of Jesus Jesus. 
there is a woman you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for nine years you are following right now for nine years in the name of Jesus I speak to you prophetically according to the time of life return with your child you are going to have a baby boy in the name of Jesus I prophesy this by the power of the Holy Spirit my God will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ there is a I'm seeing two ladies you are watching you have what we call the issue of blood whether it's your monthly period or not you you continue um, to have that that severe issue of blood and, and it's a serious thing in the name of Jesus I stretch my hand right now by the power of the Holy Spirit be made whole this moment now whether I mention your case or not I bring you the life and the power of the Holy Spirit be healed right now in the name of Jesus be healed right now now be healed right now in the name of Jesus there's someone you just fell under the anointing right where you are watching the power of God just came on you as you stand up now you will find out that the pain around your back area in the name of Jesus it is gone now and gone forever gone now and gone forever in the name of Jesus gone now and gone forever I'm seeing a man you are a pastor you are a pastor and you are not watching this now but next week Tuesday you are going to be watching this video you are not yet watching it now but next week Tuesday you are in the US you are going to be watching this video and in the name of Jesus the pain that you have at around your limb area by the time you are watching this video and receiving this prayer you will marvel and wonder at the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural healing for you supernatural healing supernatural healing by the power of the Holy Spirit supernatural healing in the name of Jesus one of the mothers I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a vision one of the mothers in New Heritage Baptist Church your daughter is sick I don't know what the problem is but this is something that has to do with it looks like it's a, it's a, a, a condition that has to do with blood in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I declare let there be a miracle right now I forbid death I forbid death in the name of Jesus death by accident in the name of Jesus and I use this opportunity to minister to you in addition to all the efforts that our doctors and nurses and all the medical personnel continue to to bring to the table to help ward off the coronavirus I declare by the spirit that you are exempted in your going out and in your coming in you have no covenant with death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now very quickly I want you to lift up your bottles of anointing oil and for the church there I'm going to pray on the oil once I pray on the oil then even when the broadcast is over you can just anoint yourself by faith listen the miracle is not in the oil you can put oil on your head and nothing happens uh, it is not the ritual it is the faith in the Word of God the faith in the principle of the kingdom that empowers that oil lift that oil stretch it towards me if you can father in the name of Jesus there are probably are thousands of oils lifted by faith in the name of Jesus may the power of the Holy Ghost step upon that medium that oil as a point of contact and Lord I pray that as your people apply that oil by faith according to the provisions of Scripture let it bring breakthroughs oh God let it bring miracles let it bring signs let it bring wonders in the name of Jesus let this oil be an oil of judgment over wickedness let this oil in the name of Jesus be an oil of faith favor let this oil be an oil of speed let this oil be an oil of lifting in the mighty name of Jesus I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be miracles as you apply this oil in the name of Jesus let there be all kinds of supernatural miracles in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I like us to pray prophetically over New Heritage Baptist Church over the man of God over the membership all over the world in the name of Jesus lift your voice in one accord and let's pray for New Heritage Baptist Church we decree and declare your path is as a shining light shining ever brighter even unto the perfect day we decree and declare you have no covenant with death we forbid you from being small you will continue to manage 
manifest the glory of God in that church. The least among you becomes as great as David. In the name of Jesus, the old and the young alike, you are blessed. In the name of Jesus, the fullness of your days you will fulfill. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. We join forces as believers online, captured through the mystery of the cloud, and we speak over your life. New Heritage Baptist Church, go from glory to glory. All the churches and ministries connected to you, we declare they are experiencing the power of God. We pray for the pastorate, we pray for the deaconry, the eldership in the name of Jesus. Experience the lifting power of Jesus. Let there be such dramatic testimonies in this church, even beginning from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that you will experience the grace of God supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Now I have a few minutes before we round up. I believe with all my heart that the love of Jesus and salvation is the greatest miracle of all. It doesn't matter what breakthrough you have received and you will receive. If you are not saved, genuinely saved, born again, then you are robbing yourself of the opportunity to experience the life of God. The Bible says when the spirit of truth comes, that he will reprove the world of three things, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. It is true that God will not condemn you no matter what it is that you have done. That a broken and a contrite heart, oh God, you will not despise. But at the same time, you must be intentional about making that decision. And someone following, watching me right now, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Listen to the voice of this preacher. That it's time to win that war of destiny. You're saying, Apostle, I truly, truly am at a point in my life where I need Jesus. There's the logistics of our travels, but... Um, finally, we're here. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, please, would you help me honor the woman of God and honor everyone who has made this meeting? We honor our mothers, our sisters, our aunties. Let's give them a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I stepped in and just a few minutes of um, Victoria's worship. I mean, I was almost not coming to preach again. Let's honor her. God bless you. Hallelujah. I cannot do it on my own unless you take over. I cannot see these things alone unless you take over. How can I see you on my own? Jesus, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. I cannot know you on my own unless you take over. Cannot leave this life alone. Unless you take over, let it be your prayer. So take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. We cannot see this on our own. Unless he takes over. Unless he takes over, sing it one time. Take over, Jesus, take over. Take over, Jesus, take over. Spirit of the living God, we submit to your wisdom. We have come for a real encounter. We have come with hearts opened. We have come because we recognize your ability to show us the truths that are contained in the word. 
of Jesus that you will transform our lives take us to dimensions unimagined in the name of Jesus Christ would you do me a favor to just walk up to 10 people and tell them your life is truly about to change your life is truly about to change seated again God bless you I truly believe with all my heart and I prayed and I asked the Lord to even honor this desire in my heart first for um, and our sisters our aunties because they they are hosting us and granting us an opportunity to experience God again and, and I pray that the blessing will start from them yeah. hallelujah Praise the Lord. So let's pay attention and trust the Lord to give us understanding. In this kingdom, we reign by light. It takes more than desire. It is our understanding, our comprehending the ways of God. This is where the victory of the believer is. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, he says, having their understanding darkened, says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. So conferences like these, much more than times where we just fellowship with one another, there are times when the spirit of the Lord opens us up to dimensions of understanding. It matters that you not only know God, but that you understand his ways. Praise the Lord. Please listen. When it has to do with the pursuit of God, our knowledge of his person and our conformity in experience into his image and his likeness, there is no end. We will continue that system of transition through eternity. But when it has to do with your victory in this kingdom, the systems of God and the principles that make for your victory are finite. They can be learned, they can be known. They are not infinite. It is the pursuit of God, the pursuit of his person, knowing him, the encounter that comes. It, it is from one level, one dimension to the other. But as far as your excelling in life is concerned, you can hold the keys, they are finite. Praise the Lord. Number two, it is important that we understand that the spirit of revelation um, cannot be replaced with an educated mind. Now, I don't mean this to insult our knowledge or intellectual studies, but you see, when it has to do with spiritual things, the character of God's communication is such that both the learned and the learned must equally depend on the spirit of revelation. Sometimes, um, on the strength of the things that we have and we know and the obvious results they have produced, we may not necessarily see the need to be passionate to learn. or two things not his presence his presence will require that you take off your shoes your experience and the symbol that you know him to be he told Moses take off your shoes I am not one of the many gods in Egypt I'm about to introduce myself in a new dimension lest you add me to the myriads of gods take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. Let me show you a scripture and then we'll deal with a few things. Um, Isaiah 29 and verse 11 is a scripture that has blessed me so much and is a scripture that humbles me every time I'm about to learn at his feet. 
he says and the vision if you can see it is projected the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book please say the words of a book the bible says the words of a book that is sealed say sealed and then he says which men deliver unto one that and he says i cannot for it is sealed it is not closed but it is sealed just because it was open does not mean the seal was broken next verse and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned that means there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned stand helpless depending only on the spirit of god to grant light may this be such a meeting in the name of jesus thank you so let's get to the word um i believe that the lord is going to really really help us and grant us understanding we'll start from first chronicles chapter 12 please and verse 32 i used to think god dwells in the realm of eternity and for a long until i understood what eternity was then i found out that god does eternity he dwells in a dimension that only he can define eternity is time it's just that it is time that is limitless and every time you compress god to time you insult his sovereignty he does not dwell in eternity are we together now god is not only timeless no eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations one dispensation connecting another but they are still time dependent he dwells in a realm that the bible simply describes as unapproachable light are we together the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth meaning he was in neither of them you cannot create of that system to create it are we together now yes but when it has because he constructed this dimension of his kingdom and allocated a mystery called times and seasons please say after me times and seasons hallelujah the bible says he made the stars also having made the sun and the moon then the bible says he made the stars and that the assignment of the stars among other things is to signify seasons that means that they can guide our into times and seasons so it is true that god does not dwell in time please listen but he designed man and limited man to function within the circumference of time are we together that means the greatest gift man really has second only to salvation is time and that if you understand times and seasons and you know how to align to the possibilities that come with times and seasons then you can walk in victory the bible is very clear about the fact that all things are not possible every time no you may plant during the dry season as we have in our region here you are not guaranteed to have a bumper harvest if you will have one at all is that true because there is an advantage that comes with the rainy season it saves you the rigor of looking for water the season was designed with that advantage in view so if you desire a bumper harvest your assignment is to continue to look at the weather and to find a time when your desire collides with the season that supplies an advantage is, is god speaking to us yes so with minimal effort you will plant during the rainy season and you will find out that your crops will grow because 
part of the possibilities and the advantage that comes with that season is rain. You can outsource a system during the dry season to supply water, but it will be at a cost. That means that not all seasons carry the same possibilities. Please listen very carefully. It is important we understand this. That every time a season comes, there is always what God is doing. He's not always doing the same thing all the time. He has his emphasis. Again, we see in the Bible, Gabriel appears to people to introduce seasons. The archangel that introduces seasons. Are we together now? He comes to Daniel to introduce a new season. He comes to Mary the virgin to announce to her that she's about to be with child and that will usher another season. Times and seasons. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. The Bible says, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. He says the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. What was their advantage? They understood the times to know what Israel ought to do. So my assignment in this conference is that by the wisdom of the spirit to be able to guide us to know what times and that in a time like this what is the posture what is the response what is the advantage that this season comes with for the believer are we together let's go to the book of esther this is where my teaching will come from we're going to be exploring the book of esther for many years the book of esther has been for me <clears throat> A very very interesting book because in this book we do not find the record of a man of God and a priest which is very strange because the character of scripture is such that regardless of the dispensation you would usually find someone who would represent the voice and the hand of God within the context of that dispensation but Esther is very strange the Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a very strange king called Ahasuerus. Please follow me. And the Bible is not careful to show us the length and the breadth of this man's achievement, the extent of his greatness. That he was a king that exerted dominion over 127 provinces. A single man. I wonder why the Bible would take out the time and the rigor to be that detailed. It was fine enough to say there was once a great king. And this man was head of 127 provinces. That's enough. But the Bible goes on to give a meticulously. The Bible talks about his princes. And all the people that represented his cabinet. Amen. Then the scene changes. The Bible introduces a very strange woman who the Bible admits to be very beautiful called Vashti. Please follow me. The Bible is talking to us about a woman who at that time was his bride called Queen Vashti. And the Bible lets us know that she was a woman who was fair to look upon. I'm just taking the narrative so that we'll save time. And then at a point it was in those days it was very consistent in the character of kings to organize banquets and invite neighboring princes or neighboring kings and to flaunt their glory in their presence they would show them the spoils of war they would show them the treasures of the palace they would call the orators to come and you know just captivate the people with their skill and all of that and on this one occasion the king called for a banquet and then while the men were under the influence of the wine and the bounty of the palace on the other side of the palace was Vashti having her own thing she had her own cabinet too and please follow this narrative because there are two things I'll be discussing one today and then the other tomorrow the next major issue the Bible discusses is the dishonor that a woman communicates to the king and the consequence that follows 
the king calls for Vashti to come and all he wanted to do with her can you imagine that was for her to just turn around and go around and tell the kings look take a good look at this woman who is called my wife and the moment Vashti heard that she felt insulted and she believed she was being used and she rebelled she sent a reply go and tell the king Vashti will not come are we together the king is grieved but decides to stay calm very good man and then the elders come together and advise the king and say mr man we're in trouble it looks like you want to be passive about this issue this woman just showed dishonor and she's in a position where anything she does is regarded worthy of emulation the the effect of this that she has done is that what to begin to do likewise are we together so he says do something that will be a warning preserve the honor of the women in your province by you are more interested in the continuity of your province than your personal agenda and the king says okay that's all right and they threw Vashti away please listen the book of Esther is very interesting because the moment Vashti is banished then the story takes another switch that there is a man who sat at the gate called Mordecai a Jew am I boring you and then Mordecai took a lady in his custody a village girl to be very very modest and the bible says that she had no father no mother please follow me and there is an announcement from the palace gather all the virgins in shushan the king is about to look for another wife and mordecai summons the courage to bring his little girl go and try your luck peradventure the king may like you are we together now and the rest is history eventually she becomes queen and then being queen she now becomes very strange the only book in the bible where the official voice of god and the advancer of god's interest was not a priest not a prophet not a mighty man warrior but a woman a woman it was because of that woman that the jews were preserved it was because of that woman that mordecai was preserved a woman who did not use a knife and yet judge her man a woman who did not use a knife and yet restored chaos please follow me there is something powerful you will learn in why God allowed a woman to be the real actor the first wonder in the book of Esther was the transition of to become the wife of kings in those days were arrogant people they will not only say go they will say you are not beautiful they were they were like gods so what did Esther do precious people of God that would transit this little village girl who would dare not stand close to the king's palace but now had gotten favor with the king not only to become his queen but she was willing to divide her kingdom without divorce divide the kingdom without divorce let's honor the pastor thank you sir amen. hallelujah amen Esther chapter 4 I'll begin to read from verse 13 and then I'll just share a principle and we'll pray I hope we're not going to be tired of praying in this conference I believe in prayer hmm. 
Please read verse 13 with me if it's projected, if you can see it and you are a Christian. One, two, read. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Uh -huh. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this stop 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 don't rush if you hold your peace when and that means this season requires a response esther if you respond another time it will not produce the same effect there is a time esther and god is demand on a response the letter and the threat of haman i hope you understand the vendetta between haman and Mordecai that Mordecai would not bow as a Jew man. and her man said no I need absolute loyalty this man is a threat to the position my exalted position and not only Mordecai he wanted to annihilate every Jew are we together and Mordecai now sent word to Esther and Esther wanted to the mistake of Vashti because let me confess the palace can disconnect you with the pain of where you came from to the point that you may not remember that once upon a time you were in a position that now exalted God desires that you go back The palace can so fade the scars of your pain. You will forget you were once at the backside. And so Esther was saying, look, this is not an issue of urgency. I'm queen, leave me. And Mordecai said, go and tell her, don't you forget that you are also a Jew. They may start with us, but they will not end with us. Are we together now? Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, when? At this time. I told you about times and seasons. That every time and every season requires a response. And then it says, there, Then there shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Now here's the point. Please, every woman of God here, read with me the last, um, what's now? The clause, one to go. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Please sit. God bless you. Who knowest? whether thou has come to this kingdom for such a time as this hallelujah Vashti is banished and there is a vacancy and you know God is totally not interested in anything that he cannot find a window for me to advance his kingdom please listen when you study the bible historically many other things happen concurrently with the things written in the bible that were worthy of being recorded some of them were recorded but they were never captured in scripture everything captured in scripture were captured with respect to their contribution to kingdom advance if god could not find a space in that story where christ will be revealed it was useless in god economy promotes christ is what he's interested in it doesn't matter how popular if christ cannot find a space for himself in any story in any life in any situation it is not worth his participation for a long time the issue of the palace was not a concern to god because everybody there did not give him space god began to be interested in the palace when there was vacancy because his desire was to find a way to bring the jews out of captivity there were people who had hopped from one level of captivity to the other notice that the name god was never mentioned until Esther showed up there was nothing in that palace that seemed to honor God and so God too was inert and silent but the moment he found a vacancy he started saying now my interest can be promoted and then a little guest finally 
I've gotten someone who can represent my purposes and through that one woman not a prophet not a king not a priest the only book like I said where a woman played the role of both the prophetic the apostolic without no ordination from anyone she became the voice of God within that land There are two keys that we will learn from the entire book of Esther. I studied very carefully the spiritual tools that Esther used, both for her exaltation and the preservation of God's people. And surprisingly, I thought I would find so many keys. I was shocked to find only two. And this is what we are going to be discussing. And that whoever will align to possess these keys in this season will inevitably reproduce Esther's dimension of results. And a man's usefulness. The rewarding, the discerning of a man's usefulness. The usefulness of a person could be an object is called honor. The to discern. This is a phone. The ability to discern the usefulness of this phone and the ability to not take it for granted. I cannot act like my life with my phone and my life outside my phone is the same. That's dishonor. I must acknowledge the role and the ease that this gadget, as small as it is, contributes to the improvement of my life. It can help my efficiency. Is that true? Now listen, please. Dishonor, therefore, is the trivializing of a man's usefulness. Dishonor is the trivializing of the contribution of a person or an object in your life. I show you why many people continue to fail. Mm. Oh no. This is one of the most powerful spiritual mysteries that the Lord taught me outside of the law of encounter. I thank God for the privilege and the access he's, grant, he's granted me to um, the revelatory dimensions of God. But I submit to you that if you master honor, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp you down in one position. You will live your life as exist. It's called honor. Please pay attention. I show you why great people do not necessarily rise to the position that befits their sacrifice. They have knowledge. They have skill. They even have God. But they have trivialized the excellency. Honor is not a ladder. It's a lift. It can turn your life around in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. Please listen to me. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. <laughs> Please away with that theology that it doesn't matter. Um, I, I don't need men. If you are saying that with respect to God's sovereign power, you are right. But if you are saying that with respect to trivializing the usefulness of men, sit back, relax, and experience the shock that your ignorance will produce. The episodes of pain that will come as a result of ignorance to the point that the psalmist says what is man lord you have options there are too many things to think about in the throne but in the midst of the worship he thinks of man to the point that he's not ashamed to chase man he's he 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 he's unashamed to make his vulnerability i mean he shows us how vulnerable and soft-spotted he is how dare you trivialize man what is man that thou art mindful of nor the son of man that thou visitest him please learn this and learn it forever all blessings come from god through men to you no blessing comes from God to you. It looks like it came from God to you. Even Jesus came from God through men to men. All destructions come from Satan through men to men. 
no exception whatsoever if it looked like you had an encounter with god interfacing you and god was an intercessor somewhere just because you could not see the person anna the prophetess was in the temple for 60 years praying down jesus it was not just mary and angel gabriel there was a man in between please learn this I want you to leave this conference with something you know that you can activate right here and now and it can turn your life around are we together all blessings come from God through men to men it is possible for God to say yes and a man says no the answer in your life will be no <laughs> believers please listen please listen Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and a The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline